finished this painting a few days ago, and one of my friends was really sort of mystified into how I got this weird, uh, blurry sort of horizon line. So I figured I would uh, do a video about how exactly I did that. So I've prepared a few drawing, which is maybe going to turn into a finished piece. Who knows? But, so my palette here is not quite clean, never is, this is rather clean for my palette. So what I have is a bit of, um, I forget what color, blue, or blue of some sort, and a tiny bit of burnt umber, because I don't really want the sky to be super bright sort of blue. I want it to be sort of dirty green sort of blue. But what I'm going to do is fill in the sky kind of not perfectly. I want some maybe some little spots of showing through here and there. It's maybe not, you know, maybe it's just a little hazy or cloudy. Of course, you know, I'll probably come back and rework the sky a bit. Who knows? But the important thing is I want sky around the horizon to be a bit damp, moist, or whatever word you hate at least to describe that. So the paper I'm working on has already been uh, tinted slightly blue, as you can probably tell. So I'm hoping to make this sort of uh, not Not super beachy, which is kind of odd considering the subject, but you know, if it's not a bit weird, it's probably not anywhere near as fun. I'm basically going to do something similar to what I did for the other piece. This is um, Arlen Yellow. I don't honestly remember exactly how to pronounce it, but it's sort of a yellowy, sort of like, it's not quite umber, it's actually kind of bright, but it's not, it's not as bright as the other uh, yellow that I use, which is lemon, which is very bright. So that's, and most of these colors are these are just washes that are not very pigmented because I don't really want this to be a super pigmented area. Uh, I can always add more. So then, and then this is, I believe, bamboo green, which I really, really like. really have a hard time finding a green I really like, but this one's really nice. It's bright, usually, uh, without being just too overly bright. So, and I'll put that over yellow where it's still sort of damp. this area where it's blue, and I don't really want it to be complete, and yes, I'm probably doing this like six million things that they tell you not to do, or don't, or I don't really care, I'm more interested in the 
results I get rather than you know, any particular renewables. Most of the rules are there for some reason, but it's not always applicable to every situation. So it's not quite you know what's going on in the background. What is like? What is all this stuff? Is it brush? Is it trees? Is it just are in the background, who can say? Um, that's sort of what I'm going for. And of course, you know, I want to add a little more green because it's just not, it's, it's not where I want it to be. Um, it's close. You know, back, the horizon line is good, but dirtier. This has a bit more of the uh, burns my burn in it. As you can kind of tell, the, this is a 140-pound uh, paper. It's not necessarily the best quality watercolor paper. It's good enough, but that's how it sort of breaks up a little when it gets this wet and gives us sort of grain, which I actually like. Uh, I forget what brand of paper this is, but it's relatively new. Uh, it's in terms of ones I've used. Um, usually use 300 pound paper, which is much thicker and by like a lot of. So yeah, this is, uh, yeah, my hand looks gigantic doing this, but cool. This is sort of um, what I was doing for that effect. Um, if you wanted to do something like, you know, Add more, you know, trees in the background. You could just take more green. I'm not going to do that because I'm kind of happy with this, um, and just sort of add in trunks and, and or even just you know mountains, whatever you want to do, um, and then you'd still get some of that sort of misty sort of you know, sort of blurred background, which is something I've just started doing a lot more, um, which is strange considering photography is something I really uh, like doing quite a lot, and that's sort of where this idea comes from of having this really sharp foreground and then this really sort of blurred background. I mean, the concept existed before photography, but it's still, you know, really very heavily influenced by photography to begin with. Um, so yeah, this is probably going to dry, and then I'm probably going to start on the body, which I may make another video about, because that can take even longer, depending on how much detail you want to put in, how much shading, how much sort of modeling, which is something I like doing with mine, because I want my pieces to look sort of almost weirdly fleshy, which I'm not good at doing. Uh, I make them look good, but they're hardly ever quite where I want them to be. But that's that's making work generally. If it's exactly where you want it to be tomorrow, it's going to look like crap to you, you know. But then sometimes you do something that's really good and you really like it and it stays that way. You know, you just have to live with the work you make for a while and see how it actually looks to you. Anyway, I will end this video here and hopefully I'll see you guys again.